Week nine of the NFL season brings us one of the biggest AFC matchups of the season. Buffalo on the road, Sunday night football in Cincinnati. Here joined by our Bills insider, Vic Carucci, to preview this matchup. Vic, thanks for taking the time to sit down with us. And let's start off with kind of the the obvious storyline, right? It's the Bills' first trip back to Cincinnati since what happened to DeMar Hamlin on that stadium on that Monday night game. Obviously, it's a night that a lot of people are are never going to forget. Just what are your memories from that night? And the Bills have talked this week about trying to treat that, trying to treat this like a normal game, but is that something that's maybe easier said than done? Well, first of all, as long as I've covered this game, and it's been a long, long time, um, <laughs> I've never been through an experience just watching this game uh, as I was watching that January 2nd, uh, really nightmare. I mean, it, it changed a lot of perspective in terms of going from watching a game and having your mind in a place of watching a football game to then uh, a life and death crisis situation where football became so secondary at, at some point the fact that a game was even attempted to be played and, and, you know, even thinking about it being continued. I mean, all of those thoughts were gone. The entire night after that Hamlin situation was all about him and, and the fears uh, and then the reactions, you know, just seeing uh, those lasting lingering images that are burned into your brain of, uh, of Josh Allen kind of holding both of his cheeks and uh, Tredavious White's head buried in the chest of Mitch Morris uh, and, and everybody, uh, Sean McDermott. I mean, you looked at that game, whether you were watching it on TV or there in person, and you could feel it's, it was palpable. And the entire country, if not many parts of the world, just understood that, that something was happening. Uh, and thankfully, we know it had a great outcome. But I, I think the best part of what was a near tragedy is is what it resulted in in terms of awareness for CPR training, for having AEDs available at places where they weren't before. This entire country changed its view on the importance and the awareness of life-saving measures for athletes and for people everywhere. And, and I don't know that anyone thought about being in a public place the same after watching that game you think maybe that that outcome and and maybe all the good that's come out of that that situation maybe makes the the trip back to Cincinnati a little bit easier for this team I mean you talk with journalists fans they have these recollection of, of memories from from that night you think obviously the players do as well and they're going to feel some of those emotions when they're back on that field Sunday night I think it will be a combination. You, you hope that the positive outcome, uh, and, and it's really plural, outcomes from all of that would carry the day and keep everybody sort of in a in in a in a good frame of mind. You know, in in thinking that something so good came out of something so horrible and horrific to watch that you are are, are feeling better that okay, this was the place you. You, in some ways, in many ways, memorialize it with that place, that that was the starting point of of many good things that DeMar Hamlin's um, purpose, as he's called it, a greater purpose than being a football player, uh, has, uh, you know, the results of all that. But at the same time, I'm sure it will be difficult. I'm sure that players will who, who were there that night will will now walk on that field for another night game and have some sense of how could they not as human beings or the coaches uh, or, or the rest of us who, who just are around this game and around this team uh, will we'll have certain feelings. It's going to be discussed as it has been leading up to the game. And you know, of course, the night of the game and throughout, uh, it will be a major, major story topic. Now, the other major storyline with this game is that those two teams did end up playing later on in that season in the playoffs. Cincinnati ended Buffalo's season with a 27-10 to 10 victory in Orchard Park, and it's a game that has even still been a topic this week. We saw Tyler Boyd and, and Jamar Chase making comments about how the Bills sort of make excuses for, for the conditions that game was played and everything. So this is a game that means a lot still to both teams. Two teams that have three uh, losses on their record and, and two teams that are still fancy themselves a Super Bowl 
Bowl contenders. Just how big is this matchup? We talk about big matchups all season. The team always says that the biggest matchup is the next one. But this really feels like one of the big matchups this season. The fact is that the Bills were not at all ready to play that divisional round playoff game. Uh, they were, as players described it, a, a flat team, a, a team that had no energy. Whatever it, it needed to perform at a much better level was, was gone. And it felt like they entered that game having pretty much been spent. Like the season, um, the, the situation with Hamlin, of course, in the previous trip to or previous game against Cincinnati being one thing. But but then uh, the steady challenges of blizzards and, and whatever else was going on in the course of the second half of the season and a team that just on its performance, uh, I, I think, w was just not, especially on offense, was not uh, playing at a good enough level or certainly a level that we expected. And you could feel it. And, and then when they played Miami in the previous week in the playoffs, that felt like a team that you know, how ready were they then or or you know should were they even capable of winning that game they ended up winning it but they certainly didn't look like uh they were ready to do what I think was expected and then they got up against Cincinnati and were handled and and that was a shock uh, to be that ill prepared for a game uh Cincinnati also matches up very well against the Bills and I think the quickness of the offense these are some of the things that I think are, are constants. Joe Burrow's ability to get the ball out of his hands quickly, those uh, array of receivers that he has, the speed that they have, and how much better they can be uh, against the Bills' defensive backs. And then you had an offensive line that was so patchwork in that game for Cincinnati, and we thought that would be a matchup that the Bills would win with pressure. Well, didn't come close to happening. Is that something that can change this time around? Uh, or do the Bengals still have their number in that regard? The other thing is Lou Anaromo's defense, because it is so challenging, it seems, for Josh Allen, for Ken Dorsey, to solve what he presents. And we saw the beginnings of that, I think, in that game that didn't finish in Cincinnati on January 2nd. We, we saw it from start to finish uh, in that playoff game. That this offense uh, was struggling with protections and coverages and Josh just not feeling good about some of the things he saw. Look, we've seen this from Josh against other opponents in the previous three games that they've played this year. So how he can handle that, how the offense, the Buffalo offense can manage against this Cincinnati defense is going to be something to watch. Let's take a closer look real quick at the Bengals offense against the Bills defense. We've seen this, I feel like, from the Bengals before where they kind of start off slow and then they start to catch their stride midway through the season and then become uh, AFC contender by, by the end of the season. Sort of the same thing happened this year, right? Burrow's injury uh, to his calf limited him, obviously, the first four weeks. But they're a different team these past three weeks. They're coming off their biggest win of the season, a two-touchdown win in San Francisco. Bro looked great hitting all of his targets. I think Chase had 100 yards in that game. Um, obviously, a lot of what they do well is what they have been doing well for a while now. So how does Sean McDermott kind of go about kind of figuring out how to attack that maybe with some of the new pieces he has this week, especially in acquiring Linval Joseph and, and Russell Douglas, maybe another week of better health from Von Miller as well. I think it starts with Joe Burrow and how well he is able to not only physically play, get the ball out of his hand quickly, accurately, how he can position himself, move around to make the plays that he needs. He's not, a, a super mobile guy, but but athletically, he's really good, and his command is so strong. You're seeing a quarterback, as he has gotten healthier from that calf injury, his performance has just incrementally grown to the, the level that was expected that got him the contract to make him the highest paid player in the league. And I think when you see how he's played, you wonder – is there really anything defensively that can be done to 
not only stop him, but slow him down, uh, because I think that's the best. San Francisco has a really good defense, and he solved that defense quickly and immediately. I mean, he he was on point and, and had no problem whatsoever against one of the better pass rushing teams, one of the more physical defenses, uh, really good in coverage, and give Zach Taylor, the coach of the Bengals, credit as well for putting together a scheme uh, that has allowed uh, Joe Burrow to consistently play better than I think we've seen, we've seen him play prior to that injury. Sean McDermott's going to have a, a big challenge on his hands. And yes, they've got some new pieces to this defense that might help. I don't know that they're transformative. I think they filled holes that needed to be filled, if nothing else, just to give them extra bodies and extra depth. But can they really slow down an offense that looks to be rolling uh, at, at its highest level? Um, if that's going to be the case, and if that offense continues to roll, then obviously the Bills' offense is going to ha- sort of going to have to match points. The good news on that front is Josh Allen, no injury designation uh, today. He's off the injury report. That shoulder good to go. He's going to play Sunday. So with Josh at full health, how do they go about having a better offensive performance than the ten points they put up in in that playoff game? Obviously, that was in snowy conditions, but still, you you feel like you need to see some better things out of this Bills offense this time around. It's hard to get Josh Allen's injured shoulder off of your mind when you think about him and his performance, even though he returned to practice but he missed practice Wednesday. And that is after he aggravated that shoulder injury that he had suffered against the Giants two games ago uh, in that Thursday night game against Tampa Bay. And there was a lot of time between that game, almost a full week to the practice in which he did not participate. So he comes back to practice and you go by the medical report that says the injury report that says he's cleared and he's good. But we all know Josh Allen is not going to let anything stop him from playing, and he'll push through whatever it takes. So part of me wonders how much is that a factor in in his you know, returning to action. Again, I'll take it at face value that he's 100% ready, but it's hard to believe that that's truly the case. And we're at midseason where things do accumulate uh, with injuries with all players. But that's a thing to look out for. and. How well can he be protected against a defense that will bring pressures? And how well uh, can he find his targets? Can he be effective working with not only Stefan Diggs and Gabe Davis as his top two players, but now another game with Dalton Kincaid working as the number one tight end? And I, I believe that Kincaid showed how much more explosive uh, the routes that You saw Dawson Knox running up until the time that he suffered his wrist injury. Those can be with Kincaid, who is, I I think, the purer receiver uh, doing that. And and that's a thing to look out for. That's a big difference in what Cincinnati faced uh, last season, of course, with the Bills. I think you'd feel a little bit different about this game if this game was the one that came right after the Patriots game, because it seemed like Buffalo with some tweaks, more 11 personnel, more of a up-tempo approach on offense, found something in that game against the Bucs on Thursday night. Is that something that can carry over to this game against Cincinnati, or is it something that requires a different game plan because of what the Bengals present on defense? It's clear that the Bills offensively tend to function better when they're going with a more up-tempo approach. I think there is a natural fit and feel uh, for Josh Allen, for his targets, for the O-line, for everything uh, to move at that quicker pace. But it's one thing to do that, I think, against a bit of a bigger and slower Tampa Bay defense than a more explosive athletic defense that the Bengals have. And once again, you have uh, in in Lou Anarumo, their defensive coordinator, somebody who you know is, has taken a thorough look at how the Bills exploited the Buccaneers' defense with that scheme and has thought about and certainly tried to devise answers uh, that we'll see how they show up on the field. But I do think the Bills need to get that fast start and absolutely cannot 
have another of these games, which we've seen more recently, where they're not coming away with a lot of touchdowns in the first half. You're going to have to match touchdowns, I think, to have a chance to beat the Bengals. Close game, you know, a lot of people could see it field goal either way, you know, two two teams that, like I like I said, are, are considered Super Bowl contenders in, in the AFC. Generally, these type matchups, there's one or two things that separate them. When you look at this game and when you think ahead to where you're going to see Sunday night, what's an X factor for you that you think will make or break this game either way? I think it starts with the run game. Uh, all the focus on these two quarterbacks is obvious, but who's going to run the ball better? Because that balance, I think, will have a lot to do with opening up other things offensively. So if we look at the Bills, if Leonard Fournette is dressed and ready to be a part of this offense, you know, giving him that, giving them that power, short yardage back uh, that they were lacking. And as much as anything else, he is the Damian Harris replacement. Uh, he's also a guy who's been available for a long time. So it's not like uh, the league looked out there and said, yep, he's a great answer for us or else he would be employed by now. So his availability uh, should tell you something about him. It doesn't mean he can't help, but it'll be interesting to see how much he does and how much uh, the rest of the offense responds in that regard. James Cook uh, has to have some big plays. The O-line has to open some things up for him. We cannot see a, an offense that is just one dimensional uh, or else that Bengal pass rush tees off and then flip it over Joe Mixon uh, and that Bengal running game. Can they have success? Can they keep uh, the Bills pass rush off balance and all that Sean McDermott wants to do with an aggressive scheme? A lot of that, if not all of that, can be neutralized if they are not handling the Bengals run game. Ready, Vic. Great breakdown. Obviously looking forward to what we hope is a great game Sunday night. Sunday night football right here on Channel 2, and we'll have extended post-game coverage right after that right here on Channel 2 as well. Vic, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll talk to you next time. Always a pleasure, Jonathan.